the buses arrived just before sunrise. A short time later, security brought out their dog to check over the piles of cameras and photographic equipment. Everything good from there. And with those words, people and gear were loaded onto the buses. It was less than 48 hours to the launch of the shuttle Endeavour, and these photographers, representing newspapers, magazines, and wire services, were here to place remote cameras to capture the launch. Scott Andrews of Canon was here helping out. Unfortunately, we can't be standing here to watch the majesty of the launch, so we're allowing the sound itself to activate these still cameras. You couldn't survive watching the launch from this spot. It's only a quarter of a mile from the pad. So photographers like the Orlando Sentinel's Red Huber, who's been shooting shuttle launches since the start of the shuttle program, set out these motor-driven cameras. The roar of the shuttle launch will start these sound-activated motors running and cameras clicking. When the launch is over, Red's six cameras will provide him with hundreds of pictures. Tonight launch, I'm trying to throw a little flash and light some flowers, with the sh trying to get the uh, shuttle lifting off with the flowers in the foreground lit. Just trying to uh, bring the reader something different. The day's setup was a bit different because of this fellow. Dave Syrak is a news operations manager at WFTV Channel 9. Dave brought out four high-definition video cameras. His hope? Be the first television station to capture the launch on video, up close, and in HD using remote cameras. Dave worked for several weeks on the setup. All right, what we have here is uh, your regular storage tote converted for the process of uh, a remote HD camera to record the shuttle launch. What we have uh, underneath the hood here is a Sony HDV camera, one of the better of the uh, HD version. With uh, We got a timer that is going to be uh, set to go off at about 2.15 in the morning. The launch is about 2.28. So this timer, which is flashing now, I guess it's flashing 12, I got to set that, but that is going to connect to this box. This box over here connects inside here, and this relays the camera. It's going to tell the camera it's going to be hibernating. It's going to power it up, and it's going to tell it to record about maybe 15 minutes before the launch. I want it to record early to kind of heat up and maybe burn off any moisture that might be on the lens. Up front here, we have a battery-operated relay here. Right now, it's configured to be on. Tomorrow morning, I'll come out here again when they allow us to wipe it down, and I'll arm this, which will turn on this light to let me know that uh, that I'm running. But underneath here is something, a trick somebody taught me on the line, was there is a small little uh, resistor here that's designed to heat up just a couple degrees above uh, the dew point to burn off any lens. And if you notice, I have that positioned. Even though I have the lens shade here, I expect it to... Uh, to go through the lens shade, put some moisture here, and hopefully burn off any moisture that might be there um, that's there. We also have some damp rid. And we're going to throw this in here to try and pick up any moisture. What we're trying to avoid is that overnight, this will be sitting here for about 18 hours unattended, that, that it just dews over, just like the, on your the windshield of your car in the morning, since it is a night launch. And this, in day launches, you don't have to worry about that because the sun will bake that off. Dave placed two of his cameras on this small mound. Just a few feet away, Canon's Scott Andrews helped a group of Japanese photographers set up for the launch. They were here because Japan played a big part in this mission. A Japanese astronaut and a Japanese module for the space station were aboard. We bring photographers out that say they work for a local paper in Des Moines, Iowa, and there happens to be an astronaut from that, uh, from that area that's, that's going up on the flight. They'll normally send uh, one or two photographers to the launch who have absolutely no clue. I mean, they're good with long lenses and they can make a great picture from back at the press site, but they don't know really how to do this. So we take them under our wing and loan them equipment and basically walk them through the whole steps of making a, a, a good tight shot of the, of the shuttle from a real close distance. With the cameras secured at this spot, the photographers move to other locations around the shuttle. They're a dedicated bunch. And they're creative. Yeah, the mailbox seems to work real well. Fighting his way through the brush, Dave found another popular spot. A shot over water at night should provide spectacular photos and video. Typically, the cameras sit out here for nearly two days before a launch. Bill Mitchell of the Village's Daily Sun figures he's photographed 50 to 75 shuttle launches. He said strange things happen in those two days. 
One of them I came back and a bird had been started to build a nest in the back of the box and you can see the twigs and everything in there. And one, one of the last launches, a guy had a spider that had started to build a nest on the back of the monitor of his camera. Finally, it was off to a third spot, which offered a great look at the shuttle. And then for Dave Syrak and the other photographers, it's the waiting game. And you're really running through the checklist in your mind to make sure that you have your settings correctly, like autofocus is turned off, and that you've got your exposure set correctly, and that you've armed all the timers and that sort of thing. So it, I was very nervous uh, leading up to the launch for a lot of reasons. Early Tuesday morning, a bit after 2 a.m., the launch window was approaching. In the press center, reporters and photographers waited. And finally, it was time. Now this is where the press sees the launch from a safe distance of three miles. It's an impressive sight from here. So with Endeavour safely on its way and the countdown clock counting up, the next step is to head out into the swamp, grab the cameras and find out what worked and what didn't. Finally, at nearly four o'clock in the morning, Dave and the others were back into the brush and swamps to retrieve camera gear. Dave anxiously fired up the first camera to see what, if anything, he got. We were just about a couple hours away from doing really a 24-hour shift, so I was low on sleep and I ran out to the first camera, took off the cover, and I could see that the camera had rolled, but it had stopped for some reason before the launch. And I was really concerned about the other cameras and maybe the same thing had happened there. The second camera was a happier story. That's beautiful. And then it was back to the water's edge to pick up the third camera. There were bugs, branches, but beautiful video. Finally, Dave picked up the last of the four cameras and on the drive so back, was, took so a look. T-minus three, two, one, and liftoff. A short time later, Dave was in the satellite truck feeding back video, giving Orlando viewers their first look at locally captured, high-definition close-up video from unique angles of a shuttle launch. Overall, three out of four cameras is a really good record. And what I'm hoping now is that on the next launch, we'll get four for four, and then we'll be able to use this technology on these remote cameras on stories other than space, like maybe hurricane coverage, and sports to give us those up close views that are, are really look great in high definition. At the Kennedy Space Center, I'm Bruce Wiley for WFTV.com.